Peter Burris, and welcome to another CUBE Conversation, where we go in-depth with thought leaders from around the industry to bring you the best ideas and insights about how to improve your business with technology. One of the many things that CIOs and business leaders have to think about is how are they going to execute digital transformations? What will be the priorities? We all know the relationship between digital transformation and the use of data differently, but different technologies assert themselves in different ways, and very important, different relationships, especially with cloud vendors, assert themselves in different ways. And that's one of the many challenges that CIOs have to deal with today. Serve the business, better attend to those relationships, and drive the company forward to achieve its ultimate outcomes and objectives. So to have that conversation today, we've got a great guest. Thor Wallace is the Senior Vice President and CIO at NetScout. Thor, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about what the CIO at NetScout does. Sure. So uh, let me start by tell, telling you a little bit about NetScout. So NetScout is a, a network monitoring and a uh, service assurance company. Uh, as the CIO, I'm obviously responsible for uh, providing the tools and the environment for running the, the company. Um, I'm also heavily involved in, for example, understanding the applications and the business direction that we're taking. We're also working on improving <clears throat> our customer relationships and experiences. For example, we have a, a customer portal that we're sort of reevaluating and sort of improving. Um, and we're also uh, obviously um, trying to drive user productivity worldwide. We have uh, very briefly about 33 locations uh, worldwide. Uh, we're headquartered here in, um, outside of Boston um, and have large uh, uh, offices both in Texas and California. So you're a traditional supplier of technology services that's trying to make a transition to this new world. And as part of that, NetScout itself is going through digital transformation so that it can better support its customers' digital transformations. Have I got that right? Exactly, so let me tell you a little bit about sort of what we're trying to achieve, what kind of the, some of the whys are, and sort of the, you know, where we are at this moment. Uh, yeah, so we're, you know, we as a company uh, are being challenged by the same uh, sort of environment that everyone else is being challenged with, which is to be able to move as quickly as we can um, and provide as much of an impact to our customers as possible. So, so how I've read that sort of mandate and that remit is to really focus on <clears throat> uh, improving our customer experience. As I said, you know, working with uh, a new sort of new platform and re-platforming re and refactoring our application, our customer service application, um, but also really focusing on how best to, to improve user productivity. Um, so th those are the areas that we've been focusing on uh, direct driving. Uh, IT productivity is important to me, so uh, that's a fairly substantial argument for moving operations to the cloud. And we're also, part of that is transforming sort of a hardware-based environment to a, to a much more of a virtualized and software-based environment. So that includes cloud, that includes virtualization, which we've obviously have taken a lot of ground on. Um, and you know, for example, what we've already done is virtualized all of our operations in the data center. Uh, over the years, we've also moved a lot of workloads to uh, cloud. We're you know cloud agnostic, but uh, you know we have a fairly large uh, environment. It was Salesforce.com. We use Office 365, which are obviously major applications on the cloud. So we have a, a, a workload that's quite mixed for today. We can we maintain uh, on-prem data centers. We have an, a fairly large engineering footprint as well. So uh, we, we kind of live in all of the worlds. Uh, so we live obviously on-prem, we have cloud. Um, and one of the things that I think we've learned over the years is that in order to continue the journey of cloud, we need to really worry about a couple things. One is we want to make sure that we, are, we keep our operations um, in, in an excellent place, so, uh, and I can talk more about that um, in a few minutes. And as I said, we, we want to continue to maintain our ability to execute in really what I call velocity to be able to add value. Um, and so cloud actually presents some of those opportunities for us, but it also obviously makes things quite complicated uh, in that we have uh, multiple environments. We have to make sure that people uh, still get the services and the applications they need to do their job. 
um, and provide those uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a very productive way, in a cost-effective way, so that we can maintain that as an IT organization. So you've got Salesforce.com, you've got Office 365, you've got some other objectives of moving some other applications up into the cloud. Uh, each of those applications, though, has been historically associated with a general purpose network that you get to control. Right. So that you can give different quality of service to different classes of workload or applications. Uh, how is that changing? And what pressures is that putting on your network as you move to more cloud-based operations? Well, I think that's a huge, um, challenge for us and I think frankly for, for most people, I think you have to rethink how your network is designed fundamentally from the ground up. And if you think about networks in the past, uh, you know, in, in mainly an on-prem world, you basically had a backhaul, a lot of traffic in our in our case, 33 locations worldwide, a lot of backhauling of of, um, of services and, and, and transactions back to wherever that application exists. So for example, historically we've had Office, excuse me, the Microsoft uh, mail system or exchange on-prem. Uh, we have you know, other services that are on-prem, for example, Oracle and our ERP system, et cetera. And the challenge was to move all that traffic um, back to basically our core data center. And as you move to the cloud, uh, you have an opportunity actually real th real to rethink that. So what we've been in the process of doing over the last, say, year, has been to redesign our network from the ground up and moving away from sort of this central monolithic uh, network to more of a cloud slash edge-based network. Um, so with that, we've also moved from hardware basically a, a, a fairly heavy investment in hardware in each of the offices, for example. Uh, and we're now, or we've actually been in the process, very far along in the process of converting all that hardware into a software-defined network um, that allows us to do some things that we have never been able to do operationally. Uh, for example, we can make deployments sort of from one central location worldwide, both for security and patching, et cetera. Um, and so what we've also done is we've moved, as I said, we have a lot of our workloads already in the cloud and we continue to put more in the cloud. Uh, one of the things that's become important is we've got to maintain and create actually a low latency environment. So for example, ultimately putting our you know, unified communication systems and technologies in the cloud, to me worries me without having uh, a low latency environment and low latency network so that we can actually provide dial tone world worldwide and without worrying about performance. So what we've, what we've already done is we've transitioned from the centralized network into an edge-based network. We've actually have now a partner that we now are putting in services into a local presence idea uh, worldwide into, from, into three locations for Equinix. And with that comes the software-based network and allows us to move traffic directly to the edge and therefore once we're at the edge we can go very quickly sort of at backbone speeds into whatever cloud service we need, whether it's Azure, AWS, or Salesforce, or any other provider, Office 365, we can get that sort of speed and low latency. That has created a, a, a new environment for us, which is now virtual, software-based. Uh, it gives us a tremendous amount of flexibility and moving what I consider fairly uh, heavy and significant workloads that remain on-prem. It gives us the option of moving that to the cloud. So with that, one of the key things that comes with that is holding, making sure that we can hold our, our, accountable, our, our vendors very accountable for performance. So for example, if we experience an issue with Office 365 performance, whether it's in Pune or in Westford or wherever it is, we want to be able to make sure that we have the information and the data that says to Microsoft in this case, hey, you know, we're actually, the performance isn't great, from wherever wherever those users are, wherever that office is. So we want to provide them information and to basically prove that our network or our, our inter internal sort of capabilities and network are performing very well, but maybe that there's an issue with something and performance that on their side. So without this sort of fact-based uh, information, it's really hard to have those discussions with vendors. So one of the things I think is important for everyone to consider when you move more to the cloud 
is you've got to have the ability to troubleshoot and, uh, and, uh, and make sure that you can actually maintain a very complicated environment. So one of the things we have done uh, is we, and we continue to do is use our own products actually to give greater visibility than we've ever had before uh, in this new sort of multi, um, uh, this multi sort of cloud, multi-prem environment. So, uh, so which is a very powerful thing for us and uh, the team that uh, is using this technology is sort of seeing visibility things that they've never really been able to see before. Um, so uh, that's been quite exciting, but I think that sort of, uh, frankly, table stakes moving forward into uh, you know, a deeper, more uh, cloud or, or sort, of, um, sort of workload independent model that we're seeking. Well, so one of the, uh, let me build on this, because I have conversations like this all the time, and I don't think people realize the degree to which uh, some of these changes are really going to change the way that they actually get work done. When there's a pr when you have control of the network and the application and the endpoints, if there's an issue, you can turn to someone who works for you and say, "Here's the deal: fix this, or I'll find somebody else that can fix it." <laughs> so you have an employment-based almost model of coercion where you can get people to do <laughs> right. what you want to do. But when you move into the cloud, you find yourself having to use a contracting approach to actually get crucial things done. And problems crop up either way. Right. Doesn't matter if you own it all or somebody else owns it all, you're going to encounter problems. And so you have to accelerate and diminish the amount of back and forth haggling that goes on. And as you said, the best way to do that is to have fact-based, evidence-based visibility into what's actually happening so that you can pinpoint and avoid the back and forth about whose issue it really is. Exactly. I mean, there's so much, you know, as, at the end of the day, IT is still responsible for user productivity. So whether somebody's having, um, you know, an application issue in terms of availability or frankly, if it's not performing up to what it should be, uh, you're still accountable as, as an organization. And regardless of where the workloads are, it could be, as, a, as you point out, you know, back in the day, you could always go to your data center and do a lot of investigation and really do a lot of troubleshooting within the four walls. Today, you, you just don't have that visibility. You don't have that luxury, call it. Um, and so it's a whole new world. And you know, we all are relying increasingly on vendors. Um, which means a contracting style yeah, which of is exactly, getting which things which is, done. Which uh, you know, presents an issue. Um, and you know, sort of having these conversations with uh, a vendor or a contractor, regardless of your relationship with them, uh, you're still, again, you're on the hook. Uh, totally for doing this. So you've got to have some facts, you've got to have some story that you have to show in terms of, hey, you know, we're good on this side, you know, the issue really is on you. And we've actually had situations, um, whether it was performance issues or service interruptions or bugs from different vendors where they've impacted our, you know, the NetScout organization. Um, and without, you know, deep, understanding of what's going on, you really don't have anywhere to go. You, you really have to have this sort of greater visibility. And this is one of the things that, um, you know, is a, is a, is a lesson learned um, from, at least from the journey that we're taking. Um, and so I think that's part of the story of the cloud and sort of migration uh, and virtualization story is you really have to have this newfound uh, visibility. So I think that's been, you know, really important for us. So I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if I can generalize that a little bit because I think it's a great point. As you go into a network redesign to support good operations, excellent operations in a cloud, you have to also go into a sourcing and information redesign so that you can be assured that you're getting the information you need to sustain the degree of control or approximate the control that you had before. Otherwise, you've got great technology, but no way to deal with problems when they arise. Right, exactly. And you know, as I said, uh, we've seen this movie, um, and it, you know, without having what we have, uh, I think we would have struggle as an organization actually to resolve the issue, and that's. Not good for the company because you know IT part of the the mandate and the the remit for us is to make sure that people are as productive as it can be. And so, 
um, not having the ability to provide that environment is actually a huge problem for, I think, a lot of people. Um, and, and one of the ways we are working with it is to you know, have that sort of visibility. It also means upgrading the team skills, which we've done a lot of work on. Uh, so you, you take folks that are in IT that you know, may have had a certain set of skills sort of in the on-prem environment, call it. Uh, those skills are quite different in, in that um, in the sort of cloud or the or sure. mixed exposure environment. So I think upskilling, you know, having more information, better information, is really this part of the story that we're learning and that part of the Because part at the of end of the day, it's not about upgrading the network, it's about upgrading the network capabilities. Exactly, yeah. And you can't do that, if, especially in the new world, if you don't upgrade your ability to get information about how the whole thing is working together. Exactly, right. All right. Uh, Thor Wallace, Senior Vice President and CIO at NetScout, thanks very much for being on theCUBE. Thank you. And once again, I want to thank you for participating in today's conversation. Until next time.